before we even get started, make sure that you are supporting this podcast. Make sure you're leaving a five-star written review for Ellie and this amazing podcast. Oh, thank you, Richard. But it's all you. It's This is you. This is, you got the floor here. Let's, <laughs> t- t- let's talk about some of your stuff that I just, like, I think our intro got a little chopped up, but we're going to be okay with that. <laughs> where, where where do you want to start? We can oh, start from- Oh, let's start with um, the earlier years, because that's what we're all about, right? We're all about the story and where you were and where you came and how you got there. Okay, so, I'll give you, I'll give you yeah. a quick down dirty and then, yeah. and then, then down we'll dirty. Go, go wherever you want to go. Uh, Thank you. My mother, le- my father left when I was three months. Um, my mother was a, a functioning addict. Now she's clean 30 years. Thank God. Um, yeah. But Um, so she wasn't home a lot and I spent a lot of time alone. Um, I had my first drink at 11, Mm. was a full blown alcoholic at 13, uh, got thrown out of school for hitting a teacher with a desk in the head. Um, so (laughs) that's frowned upon, I think even to this day. (laughs) So it was either, I had a choice, either join the military, go to jail. Um, I did both actually. Um, I joined the military and went to jail while in the military, got thrown out of the military for being a drug addict and alcoholic, uh, almost got almost went to jail for five years for grand larceny. And I'm sure that we could talk about that. Yeah. Uh, wow. But then I got back in the military for a second time and I was due to be thrown out for a second time, not for being an addict, just for being an asshole. Oh, and wow. at, at the end of September 2001. But because of what happened on the morning of 9-11, it actually changed my whole life. It actually changed my whole mission in life. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like I said, I was about to get thrown out for a second time. I went from that to being soldier of the year. Um, I ended up doing 23 years total, total time. Wow. Until I got hurt on duty and lost 80% of my vision. That's why I wear these goofy glasses. I'm sorry. Right now, no, I'm, I'm still blind in 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 a lot of areas of my in my my vision. But and uh, so they medically discharged me Labor Day 2012, and that was the day I, that I attempted suicide. Mm. Uh, thank God, my six month old daughter saved my life. We could talk about that. Yeah, yeah. This is stuff. Oh wow, you got. I knew. I knew you had a lot to talk about, Richard. But then, wow, because we're amazing, a chance meeting with Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, he's the one that started started me on the podcast. He's the one that told me to write my book, and because of him, that's I'm doing what I'm doing now. I'm you know, po- hosting a podcast, writing books, speaking worldwide, just trying to make a difference because people out there are struggling right now. Yeah, yes, and, and absolutely. Need, somebody, need somebody they can talk to, mm-hmm. and that's me. Yeah, so you're so, on your mission. This is a good thing. Good thing. Yep. So whatever, wherever you want to go, we'll go. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I, I know we discussed like questions and stuff. We don't really want to do questions. I'd rather have you just talk about, um, let me just go back a little bit to me. Like when, when you said you were a full pledged alcoholic at 13, what, how did you get out of that? When did you finally get out of the drinking or right? I mean, well, what happened was, uh, I mean, that's, that's I like got zone. thrown out of the military. Yeah, well, I quit, and it's funny because I'm about to celebrate 35 years okay, on well, January 1st. Okay. But I quit at the age of 20 before most people even start. Mm, okay, well, luckily you quit. Other people was, just don't. Yeah, I got thrown out of the military, and then in order for to move in back in with my parents, my mother said I had to go back to school. So I went to go to school to be a professional bartender. Uh, don't ask why, but if you're an alcoholic and a bartender, it doesn't go too well. Wow. But my first job graduating from um, bartending school was a gentleman that actually owned a bar and he was a police officer. And he gave me my first job, which was New Year's Eve, 1989. And everything was going great. Everything was going smooth. I started drinking. And eight hours later, he's knocking on my front door with three of his buddies coming to lock me up because I robbed the place. I gave away like $3,000 worth of free drinks and I pocketed like five grand. 
and mm -hmm. and he said, well, I'm going to give you a chance. He said, because you're, you're 20 years old. Um, you're a white boy here in New Jersey. So if you go to jail, you're going to be somebody's girlfriend. He says, I want my money back in 24 hours. And you got to go to 90 meetings of AA in 90 days. So I begged and borrowed and I paid every penny back. I did pay every penny back. Mm -hmm. um, and I did hit my first meeting that day while I was still drunk, still hung over. And instead of hitting 90 days in a row, I hit 300 in a row. Wow. And I haven't drank since January 1st, 1989. Wow. Good for you. You needed applause for that one. Yes. Good, good, good job. So it was either, you know, and I wish I could remember the gentleman's name. I would buy him a steak dinner. I'd buy him whatever he wanted. He's, he literally saved my life. I was going to say, we could just say he was an angel, right? I mean, I don't want to get all into all that, but yeah, it's almost, you know, wow. Amazing. So then you yeah. got, so then you, you, you got into the service, correct? You were then, then went into the service from there. I got I went back in for for a second time because as I was about to get locked up, my uncle, which I totally respected. Um, now, this gentleman, he only had like a fifth grade education. Um, he retired a multimillionaire. He was a world boxing champion of the military. And as I'm about to be locked up and he, he bailed me out, by the way, he said, you know what? I knew you never had what it took to be a real military man. Mm -hmm. And it ate at me for months. So I had to get back in the military just to prove him wrong. Yeah. And so I did everything I could. And I actually got back in to military for a second time, which is unheard of. Mm. But I actually but I actually got back in the military. Um, but I went back in. Now, there's a difference for your listeners. There's a difference between being dry and being sober. Mm -hmm. The difference is when you're dry, you're just an asshole that doesn't drink. Mm. When you're sober, you no longer are you no longer drink, but you're no longer trying to be an asshole. Okay. So I was I was still an I was still an asshole, even though I wasn't drinking uh, when I got back in the military for a second time. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, good for you. And especially being in the military. You think you'd be drinking even more. <laughs> Because you hear so many stories about, you know, you're out there, you're, you know, dealing with all that stuff. Yep. And then um, because I did have an attitude and I moved to South Carolina, which if I'm from Jersey, so I had a smart mouth. I had an attitude problem. And now I'm living, I'm working, living and working with a bunch of Southerners. They don't like Yankees as it is. Wait, should we, so, I don't know if we should go there. <laughs> I think, so I put, wait a minute. I'm, I, I'm, the, I'm in the same boat. I'm a northerner and I, I'm now in Florida. And yeah, I feel like I'm tiptoeing at times because as soon as you open your mouth, they're like, and I have to like remember that, listen, the war ended a long time ago. <laughs> it's like, we're good. We're good. You know, peace. It's peace, peace time. Yeah. Yep. It's funny you said that. You know, I got in a lot of trouble because of my mouth. And I was going to, I was due to get thrown out again, again at the end of September. But because of what happened at 8.47 on Tuesday, September 11th, my whole world changed. Hmm. When you say it changed, um, can you got, like talk a little bit about what, ch what changed on that day for you? What made you? Well, if I, if I go stand on my front porch, uh -huh. I'm actually in the shadow of where the Twin Towers once stood. Okay. You were really and right we knew that people that yeah. yeah we knew people that were in the buildings that day. And what hit me hard is because when if you remember at that time when around 847, 848 until about 9 a.m., there was no editing. It was 100 percent live. Mm. And you could actually hear the bodies hitting the concrete. You actually hear the, the bodies mm. hitting. Oh my and, gosh. And what really hit me is when the Pentagon got hit and they were pulling so servicemen's bodies out of the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And here I am, as I'm watching the TV, all my stuff that I got to turn back in because I'm being thrown out for a second time is to the right of the TV. So mm -hmm. here I'm thinking, you know, these these servicemen and women and these people in the buildings 
All they did is go to work. All they did is try to provide for their families. Mm. Now they're not coming home anymore. No. And that's when I decided, I, I actually literally, and I wrote about uh, this in my book. I, I literally cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, you know, give me another chance. Um, I, I promise you, if you give me another chance, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to helping others that can't help themselves. Mm. And that's what I, and then from that moment on is when my whole life changed, when I stopped being about me to now it's about helping other people. Beautiful. Better nice. pro- so you're on your mission. Beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. yeah thank you, Richard. Yep. For that story. That's um, pretty intense. I actually was talking to a gentleman last night um, at an event and it's about the 9-11. He was in, he was in the, he was a serviceman. He was there in, in the Twin Towers and was trapped. I think he said the seventh floor for hours. And when he finally got out, he was young, like 20 years old. He went home and his mom had thought he had passed away because they told him that. And his mother looks at him like, what are you doing here? But can you imagine, you know, the feeling too on something like that? So when you hear these stories and then you today talking about it again, but like, oh my God, it was truly a horrible, horrible time. Yep. But, and um, that, that was the one, and that was the one part of my story. And then after getting hurt on duty and losing my vision and losing my career, that that's a whole different animal. And that's, that was, like I said, that was the day that I attempted suicide. Mm. And you said your six month old daughter helped you with that, right? You said it wasn't for well, your- What happened was, cause you know, being up North, you know, being on 95 or being on the turnpike or on the parkway, uh-huh. everything is concrete, both sides. Yeah. So, I figured, you know, um, cause they, they told me, I knew it was coming, but they told me you're no longer Sergeant Kaufman. Mm. Well, for 23 years, my whole life has been Sergeant Kaufman. Yeah. Now, who am I? Who's Richard? Cause I don't know who Richard is. Mm. I know who Sergeant Kaufman is, but I don't know who Richard is. Mm. And it scared me cause I felt like I failed my country. I failed my wife. I failed my kids. Mm. So I, I can't take it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, just end it all. So I mm. call my wife. I was supposed to meet her down the shore. I'm like, honey, I'm on my way. I'll see you in a little bit. I knew I wasn't going to see her again. I knew I was never going to see my wife again. Oh my I God. knew I was never going to see my baby daughter or my two sons ever again. Mm. And I told them I loved them. Um, and my, my goal was I just bought a brand new truck, Dodge Ram 1500. So my goal was, you know what, I'm going to get the truck up to 100 miles an hour, put it on cruise, turn the radio up, shut my eyes. Eventually, I'm going to hit something. I'm going to hit a concrete uh, barrier, and that's going to be a wrap. So I did that. I got the truck up to 100 and I shut my eyes, turned the radio on, and I don't know why country music was on. I, not a big, I wasn't a big country fan. Um, and I could, I, I put cruise control on, sat back and shut my eyes and I could just feel the truck moving. Oh my God. Feel so, so, this is like. I felt it creeping. It was creeping over. And you know, on the side of the highways, you have the little, the little, the little lights. That makes the and noise. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. I and I, I heard they, they started clicking because I knew I'm, I'm moments away from ending it. And then a song called, um, I saw God today. Oh. By George Strait came on. Wow. And it talks about a man seeing his newborn baby daughter for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it hit me. It, I could see my, I can actually see me because I was the first one to ever hold my daughter. I was the first one to ever change her diaper. And, um, and I was like, at that moment is when I decided, all right, I don't want to die anymore. Oh, thank God. I, I want to be a baby. I want to be a daddy. I want to be a husband. So I, I, I pulled over on the side of the road, called my wife, and, and I told her what happened. And um, and this was Labor Day, so there was nobody in in in, in psychologist's office. But I told her, I said, listen, if I don't get her help on Tuesday, I'm actually going to go home and, and put the weapon in my mouth. I'm going to pull the trigger. And she said, I got you. We're going to get you the help you need. So I, I, I went that Tuesday and I, and I started therapy. 
and I've been seeing the same therapist for 11 years. And that's when I realized there's other people out there like me struggling. Mm -hmm. And if I can be the voice for that person, if I can let them know that it's okay not to be okay, and you don't have to end it, you don't have to end your life because, you know, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And it's huge. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. But most people and a lot of the story. They don't, they can't, they don't live to tell your story. So and people yes. don't realize that, you know, when you end, you end, when you commit suicide, you end your suffering, but theirs is just starting. Right. So right. you're just transferring pain onto the rest of your family. Terrible. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm out telling my story and, you know, trying to help people say, it's okay not to be okay. And we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. you know? And, it's and I tell you, you can kill yourself any day you want. Just not today. Mm. Wow. What an amazing story, Richard. That is wild. And thank God your wife, your support. And, you know, yes, because it's like that you came to the right time. And there's people that maybe felt like they don't have that. And that's what's sad. So that's, you're here now telling your story, which is an amazing story. And uh, wow, I didn't know that story, but that is and amazing. My, and my bride is my everything. She's my best friend. Um, she known me for 37 years. So uh, she's still the most beautiful girl in the world to me. Yeah, wow. Well, you got this, this is what this is love, right? We're not getting into that, but this is this is what it's all about. Staying yeah. together, thick and thin, and getting through all this. So you took yeah. all of the story what happened in your life and you transformed this into a book, correct? Yep, it's, it's called a hero's a hero's journey from darkness to light. It's on it's on um, Amazon. It's it's actually somebody was actually talking about even making it into a movie. I was gonna say that. You haven't thought about uh, but the book is on Kindle. You can get it on Kindle. The price is ten ninety seven and I make zero dollars off it. Mm. Everything I make goes to help people struggling with PTSD and homelessness. So I don't make any money off of it on purpose. And that was something that me and Gary Vaynerchuk put together. So everything I do, whether it's my T-shirts, whether it's my coffee, whether it's my hats, whatever it's whatever it is, everything goes to help others and not for me at all. So oh, okay. Very nice of you, Richard. Wow. What a story. It's like amazing, amazing what you did and what you've become today. So you're like I'm a, but I'm a work I'm a work in progress progress, you know. Oh well, we you all know, are. but I mean you, you know, know people you think you know okay, you know you you know you you have a beautiful wife, which I do. You got beautiful children, you live in a beautiful home, you got best selling books, you pot, top podcasts. But I still struggle. You know, there's some days where I'll, I'll put on my Facebook page. Listen, guys, I'm not feeling good today. I need your help and I'll, I need your support. And I realize no matter how big I get, I'm always going to be that one guy that's going to be like, I'm struggling. So if you're struggling, call me. We can struggle together. Because I And I tell everybody, I would rather hear your bullshit than your eulogy. Right. Well, that's where we come up with not to turn it around to this, but story talk, we need stories. You know, I'm listening, but it's nice to talk in a story way, uh, you know, therapeutic, it's there, you know, to talk also. Like, um, like you talked about your wife, like what is your wife, you don't mind talking about her? What is she doing today with you? Does you guys work together? Does she do any, what do you, does she, what does she do with you right now? And the kids? Well, right, she, she handles all the business side of the business. Uh -huh. But, because I, I, my, I still have limited vision. I drive, but not much. So she still drives me around okay. everywhere. You know, she literally has my blind side. So whenever she walks on the side that I can't see, like when we went to go to Disney on ice last night, it was kind of dark. So she had to you know, hold my hand to guide me. Yeah, wow. You know? so, yeah. so she literally, you know, she literally has my blind side. And I know she's got my back. Yeah, beautiful. You're lucky you have that too. And your children are grown now. Yeah, we can. Yeah. I twenty one year old more credit. <laughs> I got a twenty one year old boy. I got a nineteen year old boy, and I got an eleven year old daughter. So I, I'm totally, totally blessed. Mm, beautiful, nice. 
Good to hear. So do you have any other, I really don't have any questions for you because you said, well, I don't do any questions. So I'm kind of like a little stumped, but your story's fabulous. It's like amazing. And the thing is like your book and your podcast, are you, um, do you do many of your own or you just mostly guest? Cause I tried Google a little bit. Are you doing your own? Well, I do most, well, I, I do a video every single day. I, I do a oh. 60 video every day. Yeah. And cause that, I, I, I'm on like, like I'm on, I think I'm, I'm on 22 different social media platforms. Let's talk about that. My, what talk this about you. Let's talk about you. Yeah. Let's talk about your podcast too, what you're doing with that. But my, my podcast, it's, it's more interview style because I already know what I know, mm -hmm. but I don't know what they know. Mm -hmm. I want to know what they know. So for me, I started the podcast because I wanted to hear people that went through the struggle, but have it better than me. And then it transformed into now I have millionaires, billionaires, authors, athletes, doctors. Correct. So now like I can't afford to sit in front of a guy that has a $20 billion company. I can't afford to go sit with him for an hour and a half, but I can have him come sit on my show and I can ask him whatever I want for an yeah, hour right. and a half. I agree. I agree with that. There's power in podcast. <laughs> so and if I don't, if I don't know about, like I didn't know anything about crypto. So I went to the number one guy in crypto in the world and I had him on the show. Right. So now if I know something and I want to know something, I'm going to invite somebody that's at the top of their game on my show so I can learn from the yeah. best. Well, I, and I think that's what we try to do. We try to hear the stories of what we want our listeners to hear and be aware of also and to make it interesting. And I, that's why I said when I heard your story, I'm like, oh, this man's got an amazing story, inspirational. And that's what we need. And, you know, and I tell everybody, you know, I didn't even graduate to ninth grade. I'm a ninth grade dropout. Mm -hmm. um but i've read over six thousand books mm -hmm. and i've had over 1100 interviews right. yeah no this and is i can sit, yeah you know and i can sit and i can sit i've sat and talked with millionaires billionaires uh presidents i've sat and talked with um pastors and preachers i can sit and talk with anybody and most of it's because i'm self-taught and I'm, I'm a big learner and i love i love to learn and i love stories yes because even in the Bible, he taught in stories. He taught in parable parables. Mm -hmm. So people will learn more from a story Absolutely. than if you just tell. Yes, I, I love your show, and I and I've been binge listening to all your episodes no. because I love the story. I, I, I appreciate it. I get getting that from you. You get, <laughs> you get involved in the stories. You know, it's not just somebody teaching you something. It's you're you're getting involved in the stories and you could put it in your mind like a movie. And yeah. that's why I love podcasts. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's um and it feels good to know that you have that there are people to come forth also and tell their stories. There's some people some people are a little reluctant. I have, you know, a couple other podcast shows I was trying to get going on relationships. And there's a lot of people that are still hiding and still scared to talk about their personal relationships, even though, you know, they want to, but they're afraid to talk about it to people. So it's like, and I mean, there's some good stories, you know, there's some really good stories. I'm like, oh my God, you know how much you could help somebody if you could just like, you know, and you know what's going on over there, you know what's going on over there. And if you can just talk and, you know, I even told one girl, we could block out the screen. We don't have to have your face. You know, I mean, that's how you know, I don't have to tell you, you know, because you're there and you're like, oh, my God, these stories are like could really help people. And people don't realize what they're doing when they talk on a podcast. Look what you're doing. It's totally inspirational. And it's getting people awareness and seeing what you went through, saying, man, if he went through all that, I know I can do it. Right. And that's what this is. Hopefully is what well, we're trying. Is, you know, everybody, no matter who you are, we're all struggling with something. Exactly. Yeah. Like I had, I had the authors of Rich Dad Poor Dad come on the show, mm -hmm. and Sharon Lecter, and she was on the show, and a lot of people know her as the, the co-author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, but a lot of people don't know that, you know, her her son took his own life and he was a Marine. Mm, right. A lot of people. A lot of people know John Lee Dumas of you know the number one of the top podcasters in the world, 
but they don't realize that you know he lost he was a uh, he was in the military and he was a leader that lost the tank crew in Iraq. Mm -hmm. He was a, a suicide. He was suicidal and had mental health issues. Yeah. See, this is, so this, all, yeah. you know, we're all dealing with the same stuff. Well, that's what I say. We're not, we're not untouchable. We all, and I always say we all have, a, we all have a turn at the wheel. You know, we're all going to have a turn because people will look at you and think, oh, you've got this and you're that and you're perfect. You, no, we all had battles and we all had to walk through fire. We all, for the most part, most of us have in one way or the other. And I have another woman I'm going to be bringing on a podcast who's never been on a podcast ever in her life, but I happen to know her life. And it took me a good five, well, I'm going to say six years and she will come on the podcast and she will open up on her life. Again, amazing what she went through growing up with a mother that was a crackhead and what happened to her and the state actually had to take her over. I mean, her story is intense and she wouldn't talk about it. You know what? Now she will. So, and it's all through stories. And in fact, she's the one that gave me my name, story time with Ellie <laughs> before, because I used to always talk with her a lot over the years, just call me. She's oh, this is story time with Ellie. I need my therapy and blah, blah, blah. But it's important that you take it one step further and talk to people about what you're going through and what you're feeling. Because you can, it's a narrative therapy too, as you know, when you talk, it helps people, you know, therapeutic. But And I've had people, because they call me the G.I. Joe Rogan or the male Oprah, that I've uh -huh. actually had people come on the show and, and I tell them, listen, you come on my show, there's no editing. Whatever you say, you say. And I've actually had my friend Paul came on and he actually, the first time ever, admitted that he was sexually molested by a priest for 10 years yeah and from that story now he's going out speaking to churches and, and schools right. that he was molested but it, it took somebody like me and you to bring it out yeah it's people know it's okay yeah it's okay and yeah. you know what i tell people too and even with business because i'm involved with a lot of businesses now too i'm starting to get them to talk a little bit about you know, your local business, right? You you go into a local business, you go pick up your pizza or whatever you're getting. And, and you look at these people, and I'm not the only one because I've been in a lot of businesses myself and I know people judge. And they'll say, oh, look how lucky they have it. You know, oh, look at that. Look at that business. My place is... You don't know the battles or the fires that that person went through to get where they had to go. So that's kind of what I've been doing now too. I've been reaching out to a lot of business owners and trying to get them to come on and and it's amazing and because we're just kind of wrapping that together, what they had to go through as well. And you look at the business in a whole different light. You know, you look at it like, wow, you know, the food is good. But now you're looking at it like, I don't want to say it's pity, but you look at things, you look through a different lens when you see what people have gone through. Right. It sheds a different light on them. And that's what I try to explain to a lot of like you, like a lot of these people were talking. It's like. You don't know what they went through. You don't know what anyone goes through. You look at somebody, you judge. People will judge like, oh, yeah, or they're lucky. No, you don't know. You don't know. And, and as I say, everybody has a story. And some are, you know, and you gotta shake your head. The more, like, the more successful you get, the lonelier it gets. Because once you're a CEO, CFO, there's nobody below you to talk to. You're it. And if you're it and you have nobody to do, you know, you're not going to last very long. No. And I agree with that statement very much so, because then people look at you differently as well. Like, oh, they're that or they own this and they're that. And you're like, I still, you know, I cut, I still going to bleed the same color blood you do. You know, we're not, you know, we're human, but no, people do look at you in a different, in a different way. And they shouldn't, you know, they, they do, but they should not. Cause they don't know. And I always say, you don't know that you're not in their shoes. You don't know where they walk. You don't know how they walked. And that's a big thing too. With, and that's kind of why with the podcast, that's hopefully we could, you know, keep bringing these people out and getting them to talk to inspire other people, you know? Yeah. And I, and I coach, you know, I'm a high level coach. So I, I actually coach a lot of CEOs and athletes and authors. And I tell them, I'm like, listen, what good is it to have the house, to have the boat, Mm -hmm. have the jet ski and then go home and eat at the kitchen table alone. Mm -hmm. What good is it to have everything? If And in the end, you'll have nothing. So right. that's why I try to tell people, you know, it's all about relationships. Like for me and, and people know me, my, my, the way my life goes 
if it's not God, family, friends, and business, I don't have time for it. Well, we need all that other stuff. I know I do. In order for anything in my life, I always, family always came first. And a lot, and, and I'm not going to get put into that, but I was in a situation years ago that it didn't. I'm not going to get into my stories right now. But, you know, it was more important, you know, the work and the money was more important to these people. But, it, you know, it affected my life, but in a better way. Because I chose not to take that route. It was a little bit harder in the beginning, but, you know, it... And, you know, and that same uncle that died a multimillionaire, I, I was sitting by his pool when he was he was dying. And he said, you know what? I got all this money and I can't buy a single day. Mm -hmm. I and always, something, and yeah. something that Gary Vaynerchuk told me when we had lunch, he said, you know what? Your legacy will always be more valuable than your currency. Uh, so for me, everything well I do said. now, well is, said. everything I do is legacy now, you know? Mm -hmm. Well said. Wow. So come on, what, anything else, Richard, we need to cover? I don't even know. Well, I just want to, you know, because this t-shirt that I wear every day. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about your t-shirt. Let's talk about that. Today I decide. And what that means is I'm a big Joel Osteen guy, and I love Joel. I and met him. I got to meet him. And something that he talks about is every day we have a choice. We can either be the victim or we can be the victor. Hmm. So every day we wake up, our life is made by the sum of our choices. Wherever you're going to be in five years are going to be because of the choices that you made today. My choice is to be here with you. Then my choice is I'm going to have lunch with my bride. Oh. Then I'm going to go to my kids. <laughs> and then we're going to um, Great Wolf Lodge. Those are my choices because I want to be married five years from now. I love Great Wolf Lodge. So that's, you know, that's the, but the reason I say, you know, today I decide is because those are the most, the three most important words in the English language. Today, I decide. I decide how my future is. I decide how my today is. So I tell everybody, if you want to change your life, change what you're doing at this exact moment. Because whatever you decide now, five years from now, you're going to see the repercussions. True. You're right. It's not always overnight. I agree. I always say in time. I don't say redemption comes in time, but now a lot of that takes time. It does take time, but you got to be real, you know, on it. You can't a lot of people give up. A lot of people give up. So I just wanted to say that. And guys, if, if yeah, you want to thank you for that. Out, Where's the wisdom? If you want to reach out to me, all you got to do is check, go to vertical momentum on your anywhere. It comes, it's going to come up on all 22 of my platforms. You can always just email me, message me, call me. I'm always available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for you guys. No, I, we appreciate that. And um, actually what I'm going to do also, we're going to put your information up once we will do an edit. And I'm going to put your information up on there on how to get a hold of you, your books and all that lovely so, information. So guys, make sure that you share this episode make sure you share this podcast because this podcast not my not just my episode but her her podcast is life-changing and somebody Thank needs you. to hear somebody needs to hear what she talks about Aww. so make sure you share this make sure you leave a comment a written comment not just a star because one written comment is worth 10 stars on on itunes so make sure you leave a written comment for what Ellie's doing in her podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard.